Hey, motorized bike family. Today, what we're going to talk about is what do you do when your bike won't start? Let's roll. There's three core things that you want to think about. Spark, fuel, and air. Those are the things that make an engine do what it does, run, right? It needs those in combination to make it start and run efficiently. So what we'll do is, is we'll start with the things that I always have to deal with when I'm starting on the road here. I'm always working on them. I'm always messing with them. I'm always pulling them apart, putting new things on and wanting it to start. And so I've run into things where I'm like, man, it won't start. <laughs> Come on, right? And then it's always one of these things. It's your spark, your fuel, or air. It's always one of those things. First up is spark. Look at the boot here. That's a good thing to look at. Sometimes the connection here is kind of loose. This one in particular uses like a spring-loaded uh, clip that I haven't really had any of these fail. The red boot that has just a ring that clamps around it, sometimes that can get um, you know opened up too much and you may have to take some pliers and clamp it down and get it tight again. So that may be something to look at. This one is pretty good because it, if you hear that, grip, grip, uh, it's right on the threaded screw and it has a clip down in there. Sorry, I can't see it. Um, but this one's pretty foolproof. The next thing to check is pull your spark plug out and look at the end of it to see if the end is clean, the gap there. You can see that the gap in this one is, of course, a brand new one. So it's, you know, nice and clean, but... Yours needs to be very clean also when you pull it out. Now, if it's a light tan color, you know, medium tan color, then that's a good indicator of your fuel mix ratio with your oil that you're on point with it and your spark plug will always perform well. Uh, so check it out. You may, you know, if you break in period and you're using a lot of oil, well, it may be build up on here and uh, not sparking. So the spark plug is your first place to check. Once you've checked that, move down the line. A lot of times these connectors can come loose. They can be not pushed in all the way. Uh, sometimes these barrels can, if you look inside of here, they can kind of open up sometimes. So check those and make sure that those connections haven't slipped loose. And then if you have the stage one or stage two CDI, then make sure that these connections are tight also. And once you've tried those options, then you have to go deeper, of course. So you always start with the surface stuff, you know, spark plug, CDI, things like that. Then you may have to, uh, you know, go and check the parts in here because sometimes these can get burnt out. So this is the last place that you want to check because honestly, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be one of these connectors that has failed you. So that's really your electrical system. Spark plug, down to magneto, check all those connections. Magneto's the last place that you really wanna look at because it's probably not that. Usually if you've used it a lot, then maybe. Um, but it's almost always those connectors. So let's move on to fuel. So the first place that you wanna check is with your fuel cap, take it off and look and see if you got gas in there. <laughs> Remember that movie Sling Blade? He's like, does it got any gas in it? Sometimes <laughs> sometimes we've been caught with uh, not enough gas in our bike because these actually run so long, you don't have to fill them up that often. You kind of can forget actually. So it's got any gas in it. <laughs> so then come back and check your gas cap once you know you got fuel in it. And then you're gonna move on down to your petcock. Make sure that it's in the on position and that uh, fuel is in the line. That's why I like to use clear tubing so I can see if fuel is in the line and coming out. Um, if it's not and it's on, that means you got something plugged up in here and you may have to go further. Um, but first, check for fuel, check your cap, check and make sure that fuel is flowing out and into your carburetor. So if you have fuel, you know your choke procedure and all of that's good. Uh, Sometimes you may need to take this cover off and see if fuel's getting delivered in there. If it's wet and everything, if it's dry, then um, there's something wrong. Maybe there's a fleck inside of something inside the needle, you know, in the inlet where uh, fuel comes in at. Uh, further <laughs> investigation is to check if the bowl has fuel in it. Uh, you can usually, you know, uh, drain some of it out with the drain valve. Uh, in this case, when I just can't figure out what is wrong with the carburetor, 
that's where um, I'll have a second one that I've set up. If you go look at the videos of setting up carburetors, I know this is a NT carburetor and this is a HP, but um, what I'll do is I'll have one on the shelf extra that I'll have already set up and ready to put on a bike when necessary. So that's the beauty of this hobby. All the parts are really cheap. And so you can have backups for almost everything. I mean, we're talking just dollars for most of this stuff. So uh, I, and we all buy a lot of parts. I know I see, <laughs> I see what everybody talks about buying. So uh, always have extras around and then you can swap it out, go for your ride and then come back in the shop and actually see what's, what's wrong internally, probably clean it out and then put it back on later. So one thing I want to talk about next is choking procedure, like on this bike, on the 100cc. This uh, HP carb, which has the automatic choke, you push it down uh, to choke it, then you roll back uh, throttle, and it you know snaps the choke up and puts it into run. So uh, this bike, I've noticed that it runs really well. I start it with the choke on, and then if I've ridden it a while and I stop and I turn it off, I have to re-choke it to start it again. Maybe it, it's efficient enough, all the fuel goes out of it, and it kind of needs to be re-choked to have enough fuel to start. Uh, whereas a lot of the NT carburetors that I have, they'll start, you know, I choke it once, and once it's warm, it, it goes. So my point is, is learn your choking procedure for your particular engine and carburetor. Now, over-choking can cause it a flooded engine, and then what you got to do there is just, and you'll smell gas on that, is wait for it to drain out and kind of, you know, um, evaporate, dissolve, get back to a normal level, and then try again. So that's usually what you have to do. So that's also another reason why I like to have another carburetor on hand is that even if I flood it out and I'm like, oh man, I tried too hard, pop it off, put the new one on, and then be on your way. That being said, when I am saying uh, taking a carburetor off, popping a new one on, I'm setting them up with a cable, okay, and also a grip that is part of it that's on the shelf. So then I can take the whole assembly off, pop a new one on, boom, and then I'm rolling. So the last thing to check is air getting into your engine. Now, honestly, there's not much that can go wrong here. Let me show you. I mean, as far as air going into your engine, it gets sucked in through here, mixes with your fuel, goes in here in the right combination, fires, does its thing, and then goes out. So really, you're just thinking of that. Is the slide in here working properly? Uh, when you roll your throttle back, is it lifting up and down, uh, opening it up enough? A lot of times I run without a cover on here so if you feel like air is the problem take this cover completely off and get it going and see what happens um uh, that's honestly all i could say about air being a problem in this is if your slide isn't working in here so your throttle's not working it's not opening up enough um yeah i mean when you're choking it you're restricting it so it really is tight air uh and fuel mixture yeah, that's something that um, I would love for people in the in the comment section to maybe elaborate more on their experience with uh, if air getting in there is a problem. Uh, if there's blockage in maybe your exhaust, maybe that could be a problem. So, you know, an extreme one that I've never experienced. But yeah, in the comments below, let me know if what you've experienced if air has been a problem. But honestly... If it's going in here and getting mixed properly, as and you look at those videos that we've made of setting up your carburetor, uh, that is a really good starting point for no matter where you are, you know, above or below sea level kind of <laughs> kind of thing, um, or no matter where you are, you know, and above sea level, like all those variances. Uh, yeah, air is simple. Don't know what more to say. It's make sure your slide is working. Make sure your setup here is pretty accurate. What more can I say? Now, earlier I said, you know, have extra parts that you can swap out. Buy extra spark plugs so you can slap one on there. Get a couple extra CDIs that you could put on there and test out. I've had, you know, when I've used them a lot, I burned them up and they weren't working. And I thought, oh, it's been fine. It's been great. And all of a sudden it didn't work. 
So get a couple extra ones. Definitely get extra carburetors. They're cheap and you can slap one on. If you pre-mount, as I said earlier, if you put on a throttle cable and a throttle, then you could just swap it out in a few minutes. It's not really that hard and have it, the screws already set for everything. You'll probably be good to go. Uh, then deeper, have extra magnetos and maybe magnets and stuff. That's, I've never had that problem, but maybe uh, these could get burnt up or something happened where it got ruined, you know? So my advice, buy as many extra parts as you're going to need. It's okay to have those things on the shelf. They're all really cheap and good for uh, when you run into a jam when something won't start and it's a faulty part, you know? All right, so that's my experience with engines that won't start. When I'm, you know, testing things out here, all the videos that you guys have seen, I've been out on the road and I'm like, oh, man, it won't start. Uh, it's almost always been one of these things. So put in the comments below uh, your experience with not starting. Have you had to go deeper with it? Have you had to, have you had gasket issues that were, you know, a problem for you? Things like that. There's things that I've kind of ran through my head, but I haven't had experience myself with. Um, yeah, let me know your experience, what you've run into in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video, you know, hit that bell. Uh, it'll give you notifications and when I post new ones because there's follow-up content to a lot of this. Just like I'm asking you about, you know, what problems have you had? Has gaskets been an issue and not starting, things like that. Uh, because I'll create more content on it to answer your questions. So uh, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Let's